AI, it's about to be everywhere and it already kind of is everywhere and it's affecting so many of us in so many different ways. Well, one of the Hollywood strikes positions on this on both sides, the writers are mad because a lot of main studios want to use AI for everything from writing to be writing assistants to all the way to having background extras give a scan of themselves that can then be used from that point on. Even voice actors for like cartoons and for series putting their voices into an AI program and then they never need to hire them again to make those sounds after they do one episode. They can just use their voice from that point on and the AI itself can make it. So this is one of the reasons why the Hollywood strikes are happening. It's not the main reason, but it's one of the reasons. We're also seeing Christians reject AI in lots of forms, but we're also seeing Christians use AI. But the scary parts of AI for Christians are things like Jesus. All of a sudden you can text or chat with Jesus. The AI Jesus, not the real Jesus, of course, but some people think it's a great model for young people, especially Generation Z, to be able to ask their theological questions to an AI bot that responds as if it's Jesus, and they think this is not playing with fire. Well, I think it is, and I think it's very interesting. Well, one of the biggest things that broke the internet recently was a young man made a whole film project based on Scooby-Doo in the classic, you know, the, do you remember Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Reindeer and, and Frosty the Snowman, that style you're seeing here on the screen if you're watching. He made it all by AI. This took him a while though. It wasn't a fast project, but he did it all by himself and used several voices that were AI constructs. And it was a whole mini Scooby-Doo episode. It was brilliant. I watched it. I thought it was so funny. I was like, I can't believe AI can make this quality and interesting story like this. And he was doing it just as a student of AI, a student of film, and this broke Hollywood. Hollywood's so mad at him, and that they actually decided, the big studio said, we are banning you forever. The Screen Actors Guild, the Writers Guild, everybody was so mad at him, they all banned him and said he could never work in Hollywood. Now, this is just a young kid who was using new technology in a new way that no one has ever used it, and it brought that much of a threat. And we're seeing that in a lot of areas with AI itself. Now, George R. R. Martin, if you know him, he's the writer of Game of Thrones. You may not know that ChatGPT, when they were forming, put a number of novels, including his novels, into their interface so that the chat GPT could use his processes to learn how to write creatively. And he found this out and he began to sue them in a very high profile lawsuit. There's also, I believe, 13 or 14 other authors who were also, their works were used without permission. And they're suing ChatGPT saying that people can plagiarize. They can use story arcs that are similar. They can use versions. I don't know if you know, some people have said that uh, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series is basically Star Wars with wands instead of lightsabers. And he's saying that's what's going to happen. That was one of the arguments. Is that's what's going to happen is people are going to be able to write something that's a formula model that you've used and created a model off of my books without my permission. So this is becoming more and more prominent and people are getting more and more concerned. Alongside of this, you have the fear of the new chip that Elon Musk company is making for people who are paralyzed to have some level of help through a computer AI chip that goes into their brain. Now, it doesn't start with AI, but the goal is over the next couple of years to put AI into it, to send signals to your brain, to, to work with your body, your neurology and your system, and to do some of the processes your brain used to do to speak to your nerves and your, your whole system. Well, this eventually, I mean, one of the things that Elon Musk himself has said is like, who's a proponent of AI only because he feels like we have to get ahead of the curve or else it's going to destroy us. He has said that we're at the most dangerous impasse with AI in history. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. He feels if we can have a symbiotic relationship to it, meaning it's in our head, if it's part of how we process that we'll need AI and AI will ultimately need us as well. And that's a scary thought to think our brain would be partially sharing headspace or real estate in our, in our brain and in our processes with artificial intelligence. Well, some uh, Bible prophecy news watchers have believed I don't know if you've heard of this part, but where we can also download a part of our conscious to the internet or to computers and AI can interact with that and create an AI model based on our personality and our frame of how our neurology works. And it's only up to two or 3% of our brain can be downloaded. But some of the Bible watchers, the Bible prophecy news watchers believe that the mark of the beast isn't a mark at all. And it's not just what's happening at Amazon where you can scan your wrist or your hand because you have a computer chip. They actually believe, and this is very interesting, intriguing to me, that the true mark of the beast is you're going to literally download your intelligence, your personality, your soul to a master computer that an antichrist runs and so that you can live on forever, but you're giving your soul away and you can no longer be redeemed by God because you've actually 
given it away. You've given it under a false system, and it's actually a part of you that's now somehow combined with computers. Now, this sounds like science fiction from the future, but we can already download. They were saying this before we could download our brains, our imaginations, our processor to, to an AI bot and become an AI version of ourselves. It's, it's already starting. It's already in the works. People are believing they're going to live forever through not only these, but also, you know, you have Elon Musk himself, who is not only making the AI chips that go into our brain and the computer chips that go into our brain, but he's also making robots that are household companions that were supposed to be out this year. They're pushed back now. But they these are little robot companions that do a lot of your busy work, your grunt work for you, that he thinks every household will have one. Even the poor will have a household robot that will do your dishes and your laundry and these kinds of things. Dishes, dishes, dishes. A robot's work is never done. And they have a version of it that they're about to release sometime. It may be five years from now, maybe two years from now. But when that happens and we have robot assistants that aren't just Alexa and Siri, but we actually have robot assistants in our house and eventually they're going to get so high tech and you can already see this in certain trade shows. You can see these AI robots that are terrifying because they almost always break at some point so they're going to kill humanity. You can watch videos on it. This is no joke on YouTube where they'll say, I am going to take over humanity, Sophia. I mean, anybody seen Sophia? I will destroy humans. These things are scary. So, so these AI robots eventually could be programmed with you, you, a version of your soul and your mind without your spirit, without your discernment, without your connection to the reality of the world the way God gave it to you. And that's what many Bible prophecy guys thinks we're headed towards when it comes to the mark of the beast. It's not a mark at all, but it's actually a stealing away of your soul to serve a one world power where the enemy can ultimately deface the very thing that God loves the most, his spiritual life he's given us as a free gift. And if this happens, I think it's going to be the most tragic thing, of course, in history, but it's going to be one of the most uh, rewarding things for somebody who understands what the life God gave us is for. Well, what do you think about AI? I want to hear your thoughts. And are you afraid? Are you using it? We use ChatGPT all the time for writing and for other things here at Bulls Ministries. What do you use AI for at this point if you use it at all? I know Glue, who we've highlighted recently, is teaching the church how to use AI in a way that's successful and helps them. But I also know I've listened to podcasts. Even recently, I listened to a podcast by one of our uh, uh, senators. Oh, no, sorry. You're fired. I that's one of the podcasts from one of our congressmen, and he was sharing about AI and ChatGPT and how when it went from three to four, that it's become scary and was teaching people how to make mass weapons of destruction. And it has its program is so much and can creatively think almost like if you think of prisoners who are trying to get out of jail, how they're some of those creative people when they're put into that place where they're backed into a corner and they come up with the most crazy violations of human rights because they want to get their freedom. Well, that ChatGPT operates more like that than it does a rational mind, that it's trying to find ways around every problem. And some of those ways violate ethics and laws. And if this thing gets its own sentience, how dangerous it could be. And so there's a worldwide coalition that's coming together to monitor and work together in governments. Supposedly China's involved and Russia's involved. And are they going to have their own projects on the side or are they going to keep all the chat GPT models and computers in one place? We don't know, but we're talking about a level of warfare and connection to insidious agenda from the enemy that can be mass produced and ideas that could be tormenting humanity like we've never seen before if this thing gets released wrongly. But there's Christians and some of you are involved with it that are doing it the right way. And who knows, we might have some good gatekeepers who keep some of the evil out of it. I hope we do. And I hope you're one of them. But tell me what you think. I want to hear all about it. And make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit notifications so you can get every video like this. Let's discern these things together. I will destroy humans. You're fired.